Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of The Bright Side of Life. I am your host, Melissa Bright, and today I am talking with Travis Schumacher and Drew Griffin from Healing Vibrations Media. Welcome, guys. Before I get into it of what you guys really do, I just want to introduce you to the show. Usually I like read bios mm -hmm. before and you guys are sitting there forever. So I figured I'd say hi before I go into all that. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for having us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So who are Travis and Drew? So they have a company called Healing Vibrations Media. And how I discovered you guys is I was searching on YouTube for actually something to fall asleep to. I usually have my Pandora music in for calming meditation music. But we have this huge TV in our room and I'm like, I want to find something on YouTube that might have visuals also. And I, I don't even remember what I Googled, but all of a sudden I'm seeing like these bright neon colors and these like crystal bowls. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to watch. <laughs> um, and that's what it was a, a sound bath. And some of my audience might not know what that is. And so that's what we're really going to talk today about is, what are sound baths? How can they help us? What are the benefits? Um, and go through all of that. But before we get started, uh, I always want to know how people get to where they are now in life. So I don't care either Travis or Drew. I, you know, if you guys can both say, um, you know, really how you got here, maybe what your background is and how all of this even started. Um, I know you guys have been doing this since 2018. So that would be my first question. Whoever wants to go. <laughs> Yeah. Drew, mind if I start us off? Go for it. All right. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Travis. Um, so my my journey goes back pretty far um, with that the sound healing scope of things and like meditation and everything. And um, I've been I've been working with sound since maybe 2016. That was when I got my first crystal singing bowl. And um, before that, um, I, you know, many, many years ago, I was on a very strange path. And um, as I was like discovering myself, I got into meditation and all of that stuff. And um, through meditation, I ended up having an out-of-body experience that shifted my entire worldview. It changed, like I came back and I wasn't the same person. I was just just so much more wanting to help the planet and help the world in a, in a, a, bit, a bigger way than I was. Yeah. And then fast forward a few late, few years later, um, you know, I've, I am someone that experiences a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress. And I, 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 I always say that I'm a man of extremes. Um, I go from like, I could just zoom right off and then I could come yep. right back down and I zoom right off and I come back down. Um, and I just really have always been searching for ways to cope with these extremities of my personality. And um, for my birthday one year, uh, my girlfriend at the time had given me a 432 hertz crystal singing bowl. Hmm. And I had never, I had never even seen these before. Like I, I had a Tibetan bowl, like one of the cheaper ones, just small. Yeah. And um, when I played it for the first time, um, it was the, it was the first time, and I, I say this in, in every time, every time I talk about it, because it's it was so profound to me that when I played that singing bowl, it was the first time I heard sound inside of my head. I heard it, I heard it inside, like going around like a whoom, yeah. whoom. Even though I was sitting still, it felt in my meditation, it felt like my consciousness was like whipping like that. It was so strange. <laughs> Sorry, I got sound in my eye. <laughs> um, and it, it just, it sparked something so big inside of me. And I was just like, what, you know, like, what is this bowl? Like, what is happening? I didn't know what a sound bath was. I didn't know any of that stuff. And then fast forward about another year and I go to Thailand for um, just trying to discover myself more. And I was staying at silent retreats, at uh, silent Vipassana retreats. And uh, during the transitions in the retreat, you would hear the bell ring for every time you enter the next stage of what we're doing at the silent retreat. And the sound of that bell, you would hear it and it would just fill your chest with just like, like joy. Like it just felt yeah. so good. Um, but before I got in there, I was staying at this monastery and I love to share the story because it's almost like I was 
it was almost like the universe like fast track me straight to where I needed to be. Yeah. But um, I was exploring this monastery. It was my my first day in Thailand and first day out of the country, never been anywhere out of the country like this. And I was all by myself in this monastery. And like, I'm exploring the monastery, walking around and I see this garbage on the ground. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, why is there garbage in the middle of the jungle in this beautiful monastery? I was like, I'll just clean it up. And so I go to clean it up and this dog down the, down the way, like sees that I'm cleaning it. And it's like a wild feral dog. And it starts like barking and losing its mind on me. And I'm like, oh, like I didn't realize, okay, it's all chewed up bottles. Makes sense. Like it's probably their <laughs> toy. So I like put it down. And then after he did this bark around the corner of one of the, one of the like the pagoda things that they had, yeah. it was like a pack of maybe eight or nine wild like fully like savage dogs and nope. <laughs> they they came around the corner and it was like it was like a gang like one of them just like comes like around the corner and like you say something and then they the whole pack of them just start chasing after me and i mean i'm out of my element and i'm like totally terrified because they're all like feral dogs and they're yeah like they're in patches and more. It was just like, right. and like I'm at this monster and I'm like running for my life. And these dogs are literally behind me, like biting at my ankles, just like I'm about to be eaten by a pack of wild dogs <laughs> at a monastery. My first night, my first day in, in Thailand. Oh and um, they actually chased me to uh, this monastery where like a few monks came running out and they're like throwing rocks at the at them to like scare them off, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, like what just happened? And they actually chased me to a part in the monastery where there's this German monk and he had these two Tibetan bulls, like just small ones. He was playing them really lightly. And, um, he, I like, he, he started talking to me and I shared my story with him and, um, he gave me this profound lesson on why you don't run from packs of dogs when they chase you. And <laughs> I, like, it was like, he, this man taught me a lot within the couple yeah. seconds I met him. But he had me laid down. He asked me if I wanted to try these singing bowls. And I was like, I, like, sure. Like, I laid down. He played the Tibetan bowls on my stomach and my chest. And it was, again, the first time I felt vibrations inside my body on, like, a cellular oh level. I could yeah. I could just, I could feel things happening inside. I'm like, like, whoa. Like, this is, it gave me goosebumps, all these things. And right. I just kept having these experiences in Thailand with sound. Like another, uh, I went to this ecstatic dance. I love to dance. And I love to just express yeah. myself. And um, at the very end of the dance, this guy was coming through this tuning fork and he was putting it on everybody's third eye and their heart. Mm -hmm. And he put it on my third eye and my heart. And I was like feeling these vibrations and they're changing me in ways that I've never experienced before. And after, like every interaction that I had with these instruments, I mm -hmm. was just like, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to do something with these bowls. I want to do something with right. these instruments and I just want to heal the world in a bigger way. Cause I was a massage therapist, but I wanted to, you know, heal the world at a, at a bigger rate, like help people yeah. find ways to heal. And so one thing led to another and I ended up, you know, building my collection over the years. And, um, I developed a program for the four seasons in downtown Seattle. Oh, wow. And, um, they accepted it and we were doing that. We did a few rounds of that, but one day, so Drew and I have been friends since the very beginning. So we've been neighbors since the day that we were born. Oh my and gosh. <laughs> yeah. Like we, we grew, we've grown up our entire lives together. Oh my gosh. And um, one day we were like visiting each other or we were both visiting our parents on like a holiday and we hadn't talked in a few years. And, um, Drew had, we like bumped into each other outside and like, we were just like catching up and Drew had mentioned that he had been doing like all this research on YouTube and like, he wanted to make like a, a like a relaxation type content for YouTube and um, like ASMR along those lines. Mm -hmm. And um, he like told me what I was doing or asked me what I was doing. And I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm working with these crystal singing bowls now. Like, this is what I'm doing. And like, he was just like light bulb spark. And he was just like, <laughs> like whoa like would you did you want to like maybe like that that kind of looks ex like it sounds exactly like what i'm looking for he's right. like did you want to you know get together and try putting together a sound bath or put yeah do one of these and i'm like you know i was like sure yeah why not let's do it so i invited him over and gave him his first sound bath and <laughs> the rest was history <laughs> oh my gosh okay that's amazing 
and before we go any further, Drew, I will get to your, you know, your little bit of your background. Um, can I ask you, Travis, about your out of body experience that you experienced, if you don't mind? Um, I have done a little bit of meditation, but not to like the full extreme. I haven't experienced that, but I have heard so many people that they have. And I'm like, how long do I need to do this? When is this going to happen? Like, what does that mean? Um, so can you describe that? Yeah. Um, it's actually a really long, elaborate story. Um, <laughs> I won't, I won't go that much into the details just okay. because it, it could, we could be here for a long time. Right. <laughs> um, but as like the beginning stage of it. So I had, um, I, I went through a really dark phase in my life okay. um, for about three years. And when I came out of that, um, I was on this, uh, the search of life. I was like, you know, what's the meaning to life? Like, what's the point of living? Like, what, what is, like, is there a higher power? Is there an afterlife? Is like, what, I just wanted to know things. Yeah. And um, it just got me on, it, it had me turn to meditation. I was like, well, you know, like maybe I'll just explore meditation and just see what happens. You know, like people talk about enlightenment and the Buddha yeah. finding enlightenment. And um, so I was just trial and error, just every single day, just not even knowing anything, not knowing what I, what I was doing. I, you know, we didn't really have Google back then to like, just like right. look up what to do. And <laughs> right. so I was just exploring every single day by myself in silence and just, ex just seeing where it would take me. And then, um, one day my uh, roommate at the time, who was an atheist, um, he uh, came home from work one day and he's like, dude, he's like, I just had the craziest experience. And I was like, yeah, like what happened? And he's like, so I was at Fred Myers, and he's like, from all the way across on the other side of the, the store, this little old Asian woman, she looked like she was homeless. She just had like all these robes on all these clothes. And he's like, she spotted me out of all the whole people in the whole entire store. And she's like, she just like beeline to me all the way across the store to me specifically past everybody. And she gave him this, uh, this card. And on this card was this chant. She was like, you have to have this, you have to have this. And she just kept giving it to him. And, um, he got home. He's like, he told me the story and I was like, Whoa, like that's, that's really interesting. He's like, well, here's, he's like, I don't think it's for me. He's like, I think it's for you. And he like gave it to me. And it was actually the chant, uh, Nam Mioho Renge Kayo or Nam Mayo Ho Renge Kayo. Um, I'm not sure 100% the origins of that. I'm pretty sure it's India. Okay. Um, but there's, I might even be saying it wrong, but I didn't know what, I didn't know what it was. And I just got this chant. And to me, I was saying it like Nam Mayo Ho Renge Kayo. And so I started just exploring that chant and I started doing that chant over and over again. And um, I would, after I would finish that chant, I would feel something inside my body change. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm making the story long. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's so <painful>. it's okay. <laughs> we have time. We have an hour. We're good. <laughs> um, and I, I was just like starting to experience all these crazy things inside of me. And um, my roommate was a, a disaster. And so I, we were, we had like this crazy falling out mm -hmm. and it left me alone by myself for the first time to live by myself for a whole month. And so yeah. I really dove into meditation, really dove into all this stuff. And, um, one day I'm sitting on my chair in my living room <clears throat> and I'm doing the chant and I'm doing the, so like the whole goal is to not try. And it's really hard. Like it's so easy to leave your body and have an out of body experience, but it's so hard if you don't know like how easy it actually yeah. is. <laughs> and um, so I'm, it's about letting go. Like I do this letting go meditation. I let go of my whole entire body, I go through my toes all the way to my head, just like each part of my body, acknowledging it and being like, okay, I see you. Thank you for carrying me. Now I let you go. And then my legs would be relaxed, but as soon as I let them go consciously, they would go, and they would relax even deeper. Oh, and so I do that until I got to the very top of my head. And then all the, so <laughs> uh, the, the vibrations were happening. And so you, the key to those experiences, you know, so I close my eyes, you cross them and you look up and it looks, oh. you're like crossed with your eyes. You, you yeah. cross your eyes, you look up through, it's like almost like you're trying to look out of a top eye. Okay. Yep. And um, in your ears, you hear uh, a ringing 
there's like a ringing that we hear. Like when you sit in silence, there's not real true silence. There's like a white noise silence that's in the silence of time and space. And when you listen to that and you look up and you breathe, and I had a mantra, just like go, just like go, just like go, just like go, just like go. And I, just, I was just saying it over and over. And then all of a sudden, um, it was as if uh, I like unlocked, like uh, my body became like a machine and my body all of a sudden, I'm not moving, nothing's moving, but all of a sudden my body goes, ch -ch -ch. it was like, it was like my body was locking in. It was just like, ch -ch -ch. like every part of my body was sealing in. Like I was like a robot. It was so strange. But after I sealed every part of my body, it felt as if someone took a bucket of warm bath water mm -hmm. and poured it up my spine. Like all of a sudden it was like, it was almost like, it sounds weird, but it's almost like I peed my pants. It was like just <laughs> extreme beautiful warmth that overflowed up my body. And I, all of a sudden I felt something going up my spine like this. And I had, it scared me because I, I knew that I, my back was pressed against the chair, Yeah. but I could feel like someone's hand, warm hands were going up my spine. And as soon as I re as soon as it gets to the top, it hits my eye and all of a sudden my eye goes, and it, and like, it's so crazy. I get goosebumps talking about it. Um, I have goosebumps right now. <laughs> um, the pressure of me looking up opened to like another level of looking up. And it was like, it was as if I opened an inner eyelid that was like glued shut. And it was like, as soon as that warmth hit it, it was like right. a break. And all of a sudden there was just like this, it was like this electric electricity, metallic, spectacular explosion. And it was like a heartbeat pulse that went and it like connected both sides of my brain hemispheres and this electricity yeah. just exploded and all of a sudden i was everything i and like it makes me want to cry when i see this yeah uh, I, I didn't have a body i was the universe and i had there was no front there was no back i had no there was there was no singular point of my consciousness i was just this big giant infinite expansive blanket of everything that ever was through all eternity forever and there was no thought of travis travis didn't exist my life didn't exist. Nothing existed except for this beautiful, spectacular infinity experience of just always knowing that I forever was. Yeah. And there were stars also all around me. And it was like, I had this, it was like my body was this big blanket and I, and the stars were like Christmas lights on me in, in my blanket and they were all flowing together. Yeah. And I was there for eternity. I was there for just forever. There was, there was no more connection to Travis. And then out of nowhere, uh, in the space of the blackness and the light, um, it was as if this, it was like a book, a glowing book with TV screens just comes, it just comes in, it's floating in time space and it just comes right. into my view. And when I see it, I'm not like, I'm not like, like, what is this? Like, I knew what it was. Like, there was no like contemplation of where I was or why I was there. There was no thought of what I would be thinking with my natural mind. Right. It was like this in full knowing. And as these screams were coming by, they were, they were going by like someone had like a picture book and they're like, just like yeah. making the page go by so fast and they were just going by. But time is so different there because it was going fast, but as each, so like as each page would come, it was like, it was like, they were like floating TV screens. So right. the screen would come out as like a page of a book and I would see someone like a man, his wife, their child in their yard, their picket fence, their dog. And I knew every single detail about every single one of them. It was, I knew them as if they were me. And then the next one would come and it would be, you know, like I'm in a whole nother different country and I'm seeing like watching native Americans, you know, running across the plains and the prairies doing right. their thing. I knew every single one of them. I knew the horses. I knew the location. <laughs> I knew, I knew everything. And these are going by like, just like flying by, but I have yeah. enough time to process every single one. So strange. Yeah. And all of a sudden one of those screens pops out and it's me sitting on my chair. And it, in that moment I go, I'm like, that's me. And I had the realization of me being alive in that experience. And I go into the experience and then all of a sudden I'm like, it, all of a sudden I hear, I thought I had left my radio on full blast because it was just like this yeah. just like this crazy noise that is just so overwhelming. 
And all of a sudden I open my eyes and I'm on my chair and I'm on my, on my, in my home. And I'm like, and every single part of my body was in a muscle spasm. So like, it was like my, oh soul, my, was, it was like my soul was coming back into my vehicle. And I was looking at my hands and like, I'm like shaking right now because of the story. I haven't told it in a while. <laughs> and I just started bawling my eyes out. And I was just like, what just happened to me? You know, like no substance, like just full <laughs> sober meditation. <laughs> I lost all identity to Travis and somehow found my way back to Travis, which was like a profound lesson in that, you know, like, you know, maybe it, it's like, we're not in control. You know, like yeah. if I, I don't know how I was able to come back is the whole thing. Like I was right. so, there was no Travis. And the fact that I came back shows, you know, like we are a part of this big it, infinite space, but we've also like fragmented ourselves out to experience that separation and experience these lives as individuals. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that, when that, after that happened, I became the crazy guy and everyone thought I was crazy because I was like trying to share the story with everyone who people were just like, dude, you're nuts. Like, I'm like, I had, I went through a really dark phase actually after that because I felt so alone with my, what I had just experienced and like yeah. no one I could talk to about it. No one that I could relate to about it. And, um, <clears throat> ended up having another one, uh, about three weeks later, which was a totally different experience. And both of those, I haven't really tried since because I was able to, I saw everything that I needed to see. And I, yeah. it, I came back a changed man and I wanted to heal the world and I wanted to help everybody find this knowledge, but you can't really tell anybody the knowledge. You just can only give them love and like help them heal themselves so that they can in turn, hopefully try to find that enlightenment and that experience on their own through their own healing modalities. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's funny that you said no substance because I was like, this sounds like some kind of trip or or something. But I I have heard and that's why I asked you about your experience first, because I've heard people talk about it, but I've never got to ask them like, hey, what did it feel like? And you described it so perfectly well for you. Maybe that's how it is for other people. Maybe it's not. But at least like I believe you because I think it's totally possible. It's just you have to let go. So yep. I appreciate yep. you sharing that. Yeah. Thank you for receiving it. Um, another really interesting thing about it is that um, like I've done, you know, psychedelics before mm -hmm. and I feel like having an out-of-body experience in psychedelics, you come back and it, it like fades from you like a dream. Like it's almost hard to like remember everything that happened to you in your experience. And you're like hanging yeah. on and it just like slips away like a dream. Whereas my out-of-body experiences when I was totally sober, Mm -hmm. were no different than real life. And I remember them as deep as real life. And when I came back, yeah. the knowledge didn't slip away. Like it was totally yeah. there. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, experimenting, experimenting. <laughs> yeah. That's All it. right. I know. Exactly. Exactly. Drew, is, is your, is your son still asleep? Do you got time to tell us uh, your story? He's stirring, but he's, uh, I'm going to let him wake up. Um, okay. all right. <laughs> yeah. My, my story is not nearly as exciting as Travis's. How do you follow that up? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, no, my story is, is that, uh, I'm, I went to film school, uh, and I worked at Amazon video. I was there for five years and I, kind of, I was more in distribution uh, at that point, And I had wanted to get back to uh, making something creative. Yeah. And I didn't really know how that was going to happen with my current career path. But um, I was like obsessed with YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. And really like at the time, like ASMR was like a new concept. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I remember my brother telling me like about ASMR and he just thought it was like hilarious and weird. And I, when he explained it to me, I was like, oh, I, I immediately understood what he was talking about. And I was like, I understand that feeling. Like I chase that feeling all the time. Um, yeah. And so I started like looking at the YouTube ASMR world and 
I just felt like none of it was really what I was looking for. Like I I'm someone who has like a lot of like tension in my body. Um, mm -hmm. and that's like a constant battle for me. Um, and so I'm always looking for ways to just really try to relax. Um, right. and I really appreciated the little tiny bits of content that was out there that was just like watching someone perform a task, a skill mm -hmm. quietly, no talking. Like mm. that's, that's my favorite type of, I don't even know if you'd call it ASMR. It's more like the like Bob Ross kind of thing um, that I appreciated. And so I had been looking for uh, artists to film their process. Uh, and I'd actually uh, done some work with a few different people. Um, and then that's when, that's when Travis and I talked and uh, I had just quit Amazon and I was sort of just looking for how can I get back into the film world? I was, I was going on 30 and I had met the girl I knew I was going to marry. And I just felt like if I'm going to do a career shift, it has to happen now. Yeah. And so yeah. I just left with no plan um, and kind of spent like the summer just hiking like almost every day and then working on these projects with these artists to film them working. Yeah. And then that's when Travis and I ran into each other that uh, probably like sometime around Thanksgiving or no, it must've been earlier than that. But anyway, we, he told me about this and, and I was like, Travis, you have no idea. This is exactly what I've been looking for. Like, I don't know. I didn't know exactly what he was talking about, but I think the way you describe it, Travis is like the people that play like the glass, like the wine glasses, like with different <laughs> levels of water. Yeah. And so like in my mind, there was the visual of Travis, you know, playing the bowl. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that this was so, this could be so relaxing paired with like the music and everything. And so I asked him to show me and we went over to his place and he did a sound bath for me and we filmed it. And uh, I watched it back and we talked about it. And I just knew that we had to put this out there. And we put it out there. I remember it was like a Friday morning when it went out. And within like a couple hours, it had like 27 views or something, which was to me was crazy. <laughs> we were like, like oh you ever gosh, put, people are watching it. <laughs> if you ever put anything on YouTube with on like a brand new channel, yeah. If it gets if it gets like 10 views in a week, that's good, you know, like depending right. on the content. <laughs> yeah. Uh and so I thought, okay, maybe we have something here. And so we kind of just did it every once in a while for a few months. And it just like kept kind of like going along. We were like gaining some subscribers and we were like, oh man, maybe this can be a business. Um, and I was, at the time I had developed, like I was doing work with other artists and then I was also doing commercials for mm. local businesses. Yeah. Um, but at a certain point, I think it was about six months in, one of the videos caught on and it just like exploded, like to us at the time at least. So it was getting like, like hundreds and hundreds of views every day. And we were gaining, I think we gained, we went from like a hundred subscribers to a thousand subscribers in like a month. And then after that, we went to 10,000 in another month and I basically just like shelved my other business. And I was like, Travis, like we need to do this. We need to put a video <laughs> out every week. Yeah. And so basically since then for like three and a half years now, we've put out a sound bath every single week. And to me, like I loved when, when we first started talking, Melissa, you had mentioned that you were looking for something that was like visual, that was mm -hmm. relaxing, but was also visual. And yep. that was really like, my whole goal was like, let's, I told Travis early on, like the music is like, what's great about this, right? The music is yeah. why people are watching and the music is so good, but it's my personal goal to make the visuals as relaxing as the music. And if we can do that, like we will have succeeded and people will, will watch regularly. 
And yeah. I don't know if we're quite there, but uh, I, I'm so grateful every time I see a comment that's talking about like how relaxing the visuals are for people. And we knew that there was a lot of sound bath content on YouTube already, but sort of what I saw was that, you know, they were leaving half of the platforms, half of the opportunity that the platform presented on the floor by just using like a still image as the visual, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Why, would, why wouldn't you try to make the other component of this platform as good as, as the music, as the audio? So that's right. what we set out to do. And, and I think people have responded to that parody, like Travis's side of it, my side of it, both like visually, but also like just our personalities. Like Travis is like deeply spiritual and comes at it from that side. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, I'm, I'm more targeting like people who are like myself and just like have a lot of like, you know, uh, bodily ailments or, or muscle tension right. or seeking just stress relief or whatever. And uh, we've kind of like clumped those together. And it's great because I think we have a, a much broader appeal. And that was the whole goal. Yeah, I cannot. I mean, you guys now just on YouTube alone, I think, what is it? 378,000? 350? I don't know how Something much like that. 378. <laughs> we just hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that is incredible. And the, I know the view or the YouTube, the YouTube video I saw was like 3 million views and like, it was literally everything that I wanted. And I told you, we have the 70 inch TV screen in our room. Not only do we have that, my boyfriend has like these led lights for every color that yes. comes on the screen. Our whole ba back wall lights up. That's so so cool. then I That's have amazing. that. And I'm like, he comes, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I am straight chilling right now. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I have got to talk to these people. I just thought it was, it's amazing. I mean, it is literally everything that you, at least for me, everything that you guys have set out to do. I think it's incredible. The visuals, I'm like, I scroll through the videos and see different setups. I see the different lights I see. And I'm just like, what are they going to do this time? What is this going to be? And <laughs> It's awesome. It is so awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So before we go any further, because I'm sure people at this point are like, what the hell is a sound bath? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> what What are you guys talking about? Um, so can whoever wants to take it, um, what is a sound bath? And what does it help people do? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so a sound bath? is exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's you are being bathed in sound waves. And so a sound bath is, it, it mainly started as something that you actually go and experience. So like, it's something yeah. that is done live. Yep. And um, we've kind of really tried to bring that into the channel mm -hmm. of it feeling as much as it can, like it would be if you were there live. Yeah. But um, yeah, as you as you're hearing sound, you know that's sound waves that are reaching your ears, and so therefore those those sound waves are also just bouncing off the walls, bouncing off your bodies, and as you're laying there, the whole goal of the sound bath is to just listen and just feel what happens, and as you lay there and you're bathed by these sound waves. A specific frequency might stimulate a reaction in this part of your body, mm -hmm. um, like an involuntary one. Like maybe you have, you know, like really bad knot in your shoulder. Yeah. And you go, you listen to the sound sound bath, and as you go through these different in these different bowls, all of a sudden you reach one of them that act, you are actually feeling it in that in that pain in that pain spot. So you can have seven different bowls, but only when you play a specific bowl do you actually feel that area. And with that sound, it goes in there, it vibrates our cells, it move, gets our blood flowing, it decreases, you know, um, the uh, cortisol, like just those harmful, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. hormones that can really flood our system and, and cause, you know, all sorts of damage inside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and they also did a study recently that showed that 
So when you meditate, mm -hmm. it can often take you, um, you know, 15 to 30 minutes to lower your brain waves from the alpha brain wave state or the beta down to the theta and the delta. Yeah. And with the crystal singing bowls, they've discovered that you can, you can get to that delta and theta state within 30 seconds. So it's almost like a cheat code. Wow. And so when you're listening, when you're experiencing a sound bath, your brain waves will actually match the resonance of the bowls that you're hearing. And they'll either, you know, pick up or they'll slow down. And then yeah. as you slow down, it creates a chain reaction of decompression. You, you just, it, lots of it is involunt uh, involuntary. So like you would, you might be listening and then all of a sudden you feel this in this specific spot and you take a deep breath into that pain and discomfort that you're experiencing. And all of a sudden you'll feel that area just like pop. And that's, yeah. that's something that I experienced myself. And that's why I was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to convert, you know, over to the sound therapy is because I used to be a massage therapist and I would experience yeah horrendous pain in my left rhomboid mm -hmm. every day it felt like a dagger just sticking in there constantly right and um this my favorite bowl is the note c it's so okay. deep and it holds a really nice heavy resonance yeah. but <clears throat> as i was re resonating a couple of the bowls back when i first got it i would feel that area it, it was almost like a like a buildup of the pain. Like it was like the pain would get worse and worse and worse. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I would just like breathe it, breathe through it. And I would just keep playing. And then it finally reached a point where it was like, it was like a, like a malignant cell that was growing with the vibration. And then it just yeah. popped. And I felt, I, I even remember it to this day. It was almost like a, like a, like someone had a rubber band that was wound up yeah. and you let go of the rubber band. It was just like, it was like my muscle unwound in that spot. And oh I've God. never had that pain to this day, ever since all because of the crystal singing bowls. Wow. And so the sound bath is there. The sound bath is there to help relax the mind, relax the body. It can help you sleep. It can decrease stress. It can decrease tension. It can de decrease hypertension. There's so many profound effects that the crystal bowls can have on the body that you don't know exactly what's going to happen because it's different for everybody. Right. And so this specific frequency might sound horrible to you, mm -hmm. but to somebody else, that's the frequency that their body needs. And yeah. it sounds great to them. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, the sound bath is just the experiencing of sound and exploring where your consciousness goes when you experience it. Yeah. I, um, you explained it so well because I did not know that much about it. And of course I like Googled more and I knew it had like healing components to it. Um, and some people like my podcast is meant to bring education to people with like how ways we can heal ourselves, whether it's through some type of therapy that they might not have heard of to this is exactly why you're here to talk about this because different modalities can work for different people. You know, some people might be able to sit there and, and meditate, but maybe some people really struggle with that. I know a girl that she can't because her sitting still really creates a lot of chaos for her like brain. Mm. So she has to do like movement for her like therapy, but for other people like this would be perfect. And that's where I got curious about myself. I'm like, well, let's see what this is. Let's see what this does, you know? Um, but for any of my listeners that like might be saying like, this sounds like woo woo or a little bit crazy, like there is actual like evidence that there, this isn't like a, well, maybe this, maybe this is how it is. Um, I'm not explaining it really well, but like, this is like scientific proof. Like all of our body is made up of energy and water and sound will move this energy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what is happening. And this is so, in so important. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and that's, that's, I love that you brought up the water component. Oh, hey, Warren. <laughs> What's up, buddy? It's so sleepy yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aww. <laughs> so cute. I've got, I've got um, my baby here too. <laughs> yes, the famous cat. What is what's its name? Perseus. That's right. That's right. I was, I saw him. Right. Yeah. 
I saw him going across your uh, lap before, and I was going to say, oh, he made his debut. Always. Oh, my awesome. gosh. So funny. That is um, so funny. I'm going to jump back before I forget. Um, I love that you brought up uh, the water component. Yeah. And so that is so that was actually one of my main uh, shifts in my own self is when I, I discovered uh, Dr. Masuro Emoto. And that okay. was, I discovered him around the same time that I had my out-of-body experience where I got to see where he, he proves and shows that vibration has an effect on water. It actually leaves these vibrational imprints. Yeah. And um, there's this thing called cymatics where you can take sand and put it on a, on a metal tray mm -hmm. and then you emit frequency into the sand and it turns it into absolutely perfect geometric patterns. Absolutely perfect. As if they were made by you know, yeah. something more divine than we can ever imagine. <laughs> and um, so when you see that these vibrations are affecting water like that, if your body has toxins in it or it's, it's experiencing um, density in specific ways, if you look at that kind, if, if you look at the water molecules of body under a microscope, you'll see that it, it's all like blotted patterns. You'll see that there's like clumps of cells mm -hmm. together that just, it's not harmoniously flowing in your body. And that manifests as like, you know, lack of circulation of blood, lack of circulation of oxygen, yeah, all these different things. Um, but then all of a sudden, you know, you put this frequency and this vibration, you listen to it, it's, it's rattling and moving all of the cells in your body. And, you know, we're on, you know, we're, it's, we're kind of at the stage of like, uh, very, very early stages still, you know, like there's still so much research to be done on sound healing. And it's yeah. so that it's not so much seen as like this woo woo thing. And exactly. Like for me, I'm all into like, I love the woo woo, like the woo woo. Yeah, is what exactly. is but there are a lot of people that don't, you know, yep. and that is where we really wanted to, we wanted to have that opportunity for people that don't believe in, you know, like, you know, a higher power or even, you know, anything along right. those lines. If, if you're just a regular person who, you know, loves, you know, whatever, whatever you, it is, <laughs> we're all so different. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the main thing that we wanted to do was make it so that everybody felt comfortable to listen to this stuff. So it's like, yeah. you don't have to believe in this. You don't have to believe in that. All we do is hold a space for you to come in and experience sound and see yep. what happens. Like you might be someone that doesn't believe in woo-woo at all. And then you have an experience when you're listening to sound that's gonna shift. It's all of a sudden you believe in woo-woo just from right. hearing sound. Yeah, so. no, I totally agree. And that's the thing is even if I would say sound baths can help reduce stress, that is not, that's not weird. That's like, oh, okay, well we all have stress. So why, why not? It's just like the most relaxing sounds I have literally have ever heard. <laughs> and so I'm like, who would not want that in their life? No matter whether like, that's why, but sometimes I feel like people might, that's why I wanted to at least mention that component because they might be like, what, this sounds weird. Like you're telling me sounds can like help heal or help reduce. And it's like, no, but yes. But then that's like, I, why I always try to bring science into it. To be like, this isn't just like, oh, this person made this up and it that's that's what people are doing now. Yeah. Um, so do you is there a certain like I know that they say like they don't want you to do a certain like melody, obviously, because you just want to be like free and let go, but is there a certain pattern that you do or how do you set up for your stuff? Yeah. So <laughs> Everything for me is intention. I feel that, you know, you can, you can play one sound bath and put a different intention on every single one of the exact same sound bath and people might experience, you know, whatever it is that that intention is based on the intention mm. that we go into, yeah. that we go into it with. And so for me, um, I'll, we'll come up with a theme and we'll think of, you know, like what type of sound bath experience we want to create yeah. so uh let's take yesterday sound bath for example where we released the uh enlightenment sound bath and it's yeah. like of course you might not experience enlightenment when you when you listen to it but we made that sound bath 
to, to bring in a balance of both the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies. Because enlightenment in our mind is like a combination of everything all at once. You know, like yeah. every, enlightenment is you're all the sounds at the same time. Um, and so we, with that in mind, I will create specific feelings that are going to make you feel good. So like, I'll create like patterns with the singing bowls. I write every single sound bath that we make and, oh, wow. and okay. every single one, they, they sound similar, but they are played different. Like I'll hold notes for a longer amount of time. Yeah. And each of the bowls to me, uh, they have very specific intentions. So like the bowls are associated with the chakras. Okay. Um, but also it's just basically, you know, lower vibrations to higher vibrations. Okay. And then if, when you base like the lower vibration, like what effect does lower vibrational bowls create? Mm -hmm. They create like a hug. They like hold grounding. They like, okay. they like hold space. Yeah. Whereas the higher vibrational frequencies are more of like stimulating. Like they, mm. they get you to like your brain to start thinking and firing yeah. because of the activity of wavelength that is going through you. Right. And so, yeah, with the enlightenment sound bath, like I, we did the low, really low octave with a really high pitch of uh, a tube harp. And then those harmonies go together and they create this like whole balanced vibration mixture of sounds that just can stimulate anything. And um, like yesterday I had a, I got a headache. Um, I don't really get headaches, but I ended up getting a headache yesterday um, because I did a sweat lodge and I sweat way too much. And <laughs> anyways, I came and I, I put on the, the headphones to listen to my sound bath and yeah. we, I'm not even exaggerating within one minute. My headache was totally gone. I'm like, Oh, oh I'm my just, gosh. I'm just going to sit here for a little bit. And I just like, and the thing about the music, it's like, I'm not like trying to like brag about like my music. I just mean like crystal singing bowls in general. When I hear them, it's hard for me to leave. Like if I'm like doing a demo and like listening to how my sound bath it turned out and right. I'm, like, I'm just going to listen to it real quick and I listen to it. I'll just, I'll, all of a sudden I'll look down at the clock and it's been like 20 minutes and I'm like, oh my gosh, like it just, <laughs> it pulls me in and that's a good indicator that, you know, you need to listen to the vibrations. Cause if you're, if you're pulled into it, then that's, yeah. 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 Oh, there's actually one more thing I wanted to mention of something you said earlier about, um, uh, so like some people might feel, you, you know, like they hear the singing bowls and they might be turned off by them, mm -hmm. which is really, really interesting is that there's only three people I know in my life that hated my singing bowls. Like they, they absolutely like people that I know that yeah. they didn't even listen to it for even a minute. Right. And all three of those people are super, super high stress, high functioning mm -hmm. anxiety people, like people that are like, they can't even like simmer down. Yeah. For so like the right. thought of them taking into that space, it's almost like changing who they are, you know? Yeah. Because yep. they'll have to like face themselves and sit in that space with themselves and process their stuff. If someone doesn't want to process, they're going to hate the sound and they're going to fight it and they're going to push it away. And then yeah. they won't be able to let that sound come in and do the work that it needs to do. Yeah. Do Would you encourage them to try it anyway? Absolutely. Like, yeah. if, if you hate the sounds, <laughs> I encourage it a, a thousand times more. And yeah. it's interesting because depending on my mental state where I'm at, like some mm -hmm. days, some of my crystal bowls are like, they're like nails on a chalkboard in my ear. Yeah. And when I feel that way towards them, I'm like, Oh dang, like how <laughs> did I get imbalanced in that spot? And I'll just like, I'll duke it out and it'll reach a point where it starts to sound really good. again. I'm like, okay, I can start incorporating this in our sound baths again. But like some sound baths, I'll be like, I hate this bowl right now. I don't want it right. in here, <laughs> but it changes. Oh my gosh. That's so interesting. Yeah. I think even like when I was listening to some of them, like you have your favorite sounds and there's probably like reasons for that, that we don't even like, well, we do realize you realize, but as a person that doesn't know much about them, you're like, why, why don't I like that sound? Or why, <laughs> why is that? Um, so that's interesting that you bring up that point. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, I know you also do different, have different instruments, um, 
are those just the same thing? Like they're, they're obviously for sound. I know that. And they're doing the same frequencies because I don't, it might've been the enlightenment one or it might've been the Leo one, which I'm very excited for because um, I'm a Leo. So yeah. I'm like, we just got a surround sound in our living room and I want to hear it because I had it down super low this morning because it was like 5 a.m. And I'm like, I can't have lions or anything like <laughs> our subwoofer right next to my daughter's room. She'd be freaking out. But I want to go back and listen to it when everybody's awake. And um, yeah, but there was like a it almost looked like a not a wind chime, but a wind something that you were holding over them i don't know which video that was for i, I believe it was yeah it, it is a wind chime it, oh. but it's called a koshi chime okay yeah and so um yeah so each instrument in my mind is like uh, a character in a story okay and so with that leo sound math for example you know like there's like this deep resonance and the deep bass and the growl of a lion and the ferocity of like the courage and strength that a Leo brings. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to bring the gong in because it's almost like the, like, like the growl and the roar yeah. of power that goes into everybody. And then, but also, you know, a, a Leo can be very compassionate and loving and caring mm -hmm. that, you know, and, you know, um, with that, I use the the Koshi chime earth so that associates with the heart and okay. so Leo and the heart. And so that brings in another stage of the sound bath where it's like, okay, you've got this like intense part of the Leo, but then over here you have this loving, comfortable, easygoing aspect of the Leo also. And I did that with each of the Zodiacs. So you can get like a, a, oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. of the personalities of each of them because not one is just only like this or only like this. Right. And then I was like, you know, like I would, I've never heard a lion's roar or growl <laughs> in any music ever. And I was like, I feel like it just needs to have like the, the growl of the lion. Yeah. You can like feel that, that, that raw energy of nature with yeah. the elements. And so, yeah, each instrument creates a different effect. Like we use okay. the rain stick. Um, I always see the rain stick as something that like washes down and like mm -hmm. just washes our spirit clean. So I always imagine it as just like a shower of energy. And as okay. those little beads come down, they just sprinkle everything away. So oh my gosh, that is awesome. I, yeah, I'm definitely going to go back and listen to the Leo one. And you definitely described the Leo perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's me for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to ask this. Do you legitimately sit there for eight hours? No. <laughs> I, I was know. like, I fell asleep to I fell asleep to the first one I watched, and then I woke up and it was light. And I was like, has that man been sitting there for <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that is the most amazing. And I mean, I know like monks sit there for a long time. I'm like, maybe, but holy crap, if he does that all the time. No, I've, I've definitely had my days where we've, you know, filmed three, four hours. Actually, there, I think there's a day we even filmed six hours. So I've sat there. We for did that. seven. Yeah, we seven. Did seven <laughs> yeah. So I've sat there for seven hours straight before, but um, we've, we've kind of like uh, <laughs> compressed the work a little bit. Okay. And so we've been doing the loop. So I'll like create a loop of the crystal singing bowls and the effect and then we'll just make it extra long so that people can listen to it while they're sleeping because okay. we used yeah. to only release one hour sound baths and that yeah. was just me playing for the full hour right but so many people use it for sleep and so many people wanted it for a longer period of time that we're like we need to make these longer so that people can enjoy them longer. and yeah. we always we always mark in the chapters like what where the full sound bath ends and where oh. the loop begins just okay. for the sake of like authenticity. Like we don't want people to think like Travis played for five minutes and it's just oh, like yeah. eternal loop. Uh, Cause right. what's the fun in that? So I want people to know like where it starts and ends. Like if you just want to experience the sound oh. bath as it was designed oh. and meant to be experienced. Yeah. That's awesome. That is so cool. I was like, I have to ask him that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, how often should people get bathed in a sound bath? Does it matter? I think it all depends on where you are um, emotionally um, and also physically. If you are someone that experiences a lot of high stress, then any time you feel that stress, 
even throwing them on for like five, 10 minutes can change your world like that. Like whenever I get in these moments of just like the world's on my shoulders, I'll just Mm -hmm. throw on a sound bath and it just goes away. Um, And also um, if you have trouble sleeping. So for me, I've never had an issue sleeping, Uh, but there are random nights that I do have trouble sleeping. And those nights that do come, I put, I put those singing bowls on and it, I don't even make it five minutes. I'm like, yeah. I'll be like, I'll be up for like 45 minutes, not able to sleep. I'll put the singing bowls on and I'm out. <laughs> and it's yeah. just like, so the best time to listen is when you feel like you're out of balance. If you feel like you're extra stressed, if you feel like your body is achy and sore, those are the best opportunities to listen to a, the sound bath. Yeah. Super relaxing. That's what I did for me. I literally like, I could not fall asleep and I'm like, I need to find something. And it was, it was so perfect. So perfect. (laughs) Um, Okay. We have just a couple more questions. What was I going to say? Oh, so I know you guys are in Seattle. So you guys do have live events that you guys um, are doing. So why don't you tell people um, about that? And if they're ever up in Seattle where they can experience a sound bath from you guys. Yes, definitely. So um, we, uh, we've been doing sound baths at the four seasons, live sound baths at the four seasons in downtown Seattle. And we'll do two shows on one Sunday every month. Nice. Um, Our next show is actually on the, yep the 21st of August. Mm -hmm. Um, And we have shows at 10 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. But every single show is completely catered and themed to something very specific with very specific intentions. So um, for example, like the last show that we did, we did body attunement where I do a guided meditation on top of the sound bath to guide people to go through different areas of their body and explore those areas. Yeah. And just, you know, give a little bit of guidance. And so, yeah, every month um, we don't have them booked out three months in advance yet. It's something that's happening, but right now we're we're just booked out a month in advance. Mm -hmm. Um, But we do have a website uh, that's uh, healingvibrationsmedia.com and we have an uh, email list. So we send out, you know, maybe once a quarter or Mm -hmm. maybe once a month, just show updates to let people know when our next shows are. So if yeah. anyone's like wanting to come visit or experience the Pacific Northwest and they're here at a time that we're doing the sound bath, then um, putting yourself on the mailing list would be an, an awesome way to uh, get that information. Yeah. I am sure at some point I have listeners in Seattle or at least they might be coming to visit there. So that's worth, um, that's definitely worth mentioning. How can uh, people get in touch with you or watch any of your stuff? I know you guys are everywhere, um, but what's the easiest way to, to find you guys? Yeah, I think the easiest way to find us is on YouTube. That's our biggest platform right now. And you can find us at Healing Vibrations. Um, we also do have Instagram and we're, we're kind of working with TikTok or, you know, we're struggling quite a bit, but, but I'm not the best at content making, um, but you can find us at healing vibrations media on Instagram and every other platform, every platform is healing vibrations media. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So I ask, is there, first of all, I want to ask if there's anything I left out before I ask my last question. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask that you guys want people to know about, um, healing vibrations or the sound baths or anything? I just want to make sure I ask the right questions. I feel that we've covered quite a, quite a bit of good stuff. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to ask you guys both to answer these questions and I'll, uh, Drew, are you in a good spot right now? Cause I might put you on the spot first. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so I always ask my guests this, um, in your own words, what does the bright side of life mean to you? Mm. Ooh, put on the spot. <laughs> I for know. Sure. I never tell my guests I'm asking this. The bright side <laughs> of life to me. Um, I guess, I guess that's what we're all constantly striving for. Right. Um, so to me, the bright side of life, like immediately my first thought was like, uh, we moved during the pandemic from the city to the suburbs and in our backyard, the property behind us is just like this wide open field with like all these, uh, all these leaved trees and 
And my favorite thing is to like take time whenever possible uh, to sit out there either alone or with my family and just like not watch TV, not listen to anything and just like relax and enjoy yeah. that we're in this space yeah. and, you know, think back to our, our old place downtown. <laughs> There's like always someone like digging through the trash and yelling right. <laughs> and just think about like how good we have it. Like, yeah. it's like we can't believe that uh, we were able to find this house. And uh, I, I like to appreciate that I'm able to go back there like during the day because I am able to work from home and I can take, you know, a lunch out in the backyard if I want. Just relax. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess it would be appreciating everything that you have going for you. Um, yeah. and I think that's obviously varying levels of, of good for everyone, but everyone's yeah. got something that they can appreciate. And, uh, those who have more should probably spend even more time appreciating it. Right. So yep. I try to remind myself of that as much as possible. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love hearing because everybody's interpretation is truly different for their life experiences and what they've been through. And so that's a perfect definition. So thank you for that. <laughs> All right, Travis, your turn. What does yeah. the bright side of life mean to you? Um, so the bright side of life for me, like right when you said it right off the bat was just being in the moment and being absolutely present. Um, and especially the ones where you're not filled with stress. But I feel like there's, you know, all of life is a bright side, you know? And it's like there's – life is is bright in general, even when it's really, really dark. Because, um, yeah. you know, like we experience stress and all that stuff. And it for me, those times are so dark. Mm -hmm. And when I come out of those moments, that's when I'm really in the bright side of life. Cause like, I'm, I, my energy is different. I feel different and I can just bask in presence and do the things that I love. So yeah, yeah the bright side of life to me is living a life as stress-free as possible and doing the things that you enjoy the most in the moments that you're alive. Yeah. I love that. So to go off, like I'm always changing my definition of the bright side of life. And like recently, I'm not going to try to get emotional, but I've like really have really struggled with energy and fatigue, like crawling to even like do this episode today has been, it's just like every day is torture for me. And so the second I finally don't feel tired for two seconds, I cling on to that moment for so long because I've been struggling for a while with this. And so I'm like, if this is what I feel like, good right now, I have energy. I feel alert. I feel awake. Like don't ever take advantage of this. If I get your full, my full energy and stuff back, like Melissa, you just go. And so it's like appreciating those moments because we do have some dark moments, but then that's when you get that glimmer of hope, light, whatever. And like, that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm like, oh, yeah. so you described it <laughs> perfectly well. I resonate with that a lot and yeah. like the stress can be debilitating, you know, and mm -hmm. like, it is like the world eating your soul. But then those days that you feel good and motivated and going, it's like, yep. oh, yeah. I just want to be like this forever. I know. And then you wake up the next day and you're back in and you're like, oh, I got one day. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. Well, Drew and Travis, guys, I cannot thank you enough for coming on here to share everything about healing vibrations. What you guys are doing is so awesome and helping so many people. Um, and hopefully I got you guys a whole lot more audience members to enjoy everything that you guys are doing. <laughs> Melissa, you are amazing. Thank you for being such an amazing host. Thank you for bringing us into your community. We yeah. can't wait to share it with our community also and hope everyone can see this and see your podcast and we appreciate your time thank you so much yeah. for the great conversation yes absolutely yeah. thanks for having us on we really appreciate it yeah all right guys i'm gonna end the broadcast